this above all, to thine own self be true. You're perfect just as you are, all of you. You've got a big brain, a big heart. You've got everything you need to be your own person. Always be yourself. The word person comes from the Latin persona, meaning mask, like the ones the actors wore in Greek theater. And like an actor, we all try on different masks. We borrow, we switch, but your mask belongs to you. It is for you to discover, not someone else, not someone else to make for you. To find yourself, think for yourself. How are you not yourself? Most people don't think for themselves. They hear someone else's thought and nod their head, yes or no. Or they wait to hear what everyone else says first before saying yes or no. Thinking is not to agree or disagree. That's voting. We all start out thinking and believing what our friends and family think and believe. Question, do you believe Poseidon is the god of the sea and carries a magic trident? If you were born in ancient Greece, you did. Do you think the sun revolves around the earth? If you lived in 14th century Prussia before Copernicus came along, you did. You absolutely thought that, and so did everyone else. Every man is a creature of the age in which he lives, and few are able to raise themselves above the ideas of the time. It's natural, actually, to believe and think as your tribe. This tendency is hardwired in our brains. This is why unbiased scientific method is so revolutionary. It goes against our nature. We believe our thoughts are the truth simply because we thought them. To make matters worse, most of our thoughts aren't even our own. They're inherited. And yet we believe they are, and we believe they're true simply because we're thinking them. Bias is normal. What's not normal is the person who actively seeks to uncover their own biases. Be one of those few. At last, I will devote myself sincerely and without reservation to the general demolition of my opinions. Here's the paradox. When you realize you're wrong, how does it feel? You feel horrible, embarrassed, but that's actually the feeling that comes from right thinking. Correcting a thought, revising a belief, admitting a mistake, that's not failure, that's success. Failure is to never question your beliefs or challenge or change your opinions. To think for yourself is uncomfortable. It requires embracing ambiguity, patience as you work through contradictions. It's constant uncertainty, continual doubt, open-mindedness that you might be wrong. When you feel right, justified, certain, chances are you're not. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. The best mentors and teachers encourage you to question and doubt everything they claim so that you can arrive at the truth on your own. This above all to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Whose opinion have you allowed to be more important than your own? How have you been untrue to yourself? What have you put above you? You cannot be true to yourself if you're allowing someone or something to think for you. This is the Faustian bargain. Goethe's Faust made a deal with the devil. He gave up his sovereignty in exchange for something he wanted. Sell your soul. Don't be yourself. Be whatever it takes to be popular. Don't use your time, your mind, your talents to give your gift to the world. Use it to make money. Don't believe in yourself. Believe that other person, with all the power and influence, believe that that person will come and rescue you. Don't be a lovable person. Instead, mask your insecurities and force people to love you. Winning will get you all the love you want. You want to know a secret? Your soul has already been bought and sold. That's how we all start out. Conformity is our default setting. Mimicry is normal. We're not born naked like Adam and Eve. We're born already wearing a fig leaf, afraid to reveal ourselves. And instead of being unapologetically authentic, which is our birthright to be, 
we forfeit our sovereignty from the beginning. Care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. It is the purpose of your life to find and be true to yourself. The best family or village creates an environment that lets the child become who they are. They don't dictate what the child should be. Become who you are. Polonius didn't say to his son, to mine own self be true. He said, to thine own self. He didn't say, stay true to your roots or your church or your family name. He said, to thine own self be true. The temptation will always be to blend in, to let others decide our fate, choose our personalities for us, think for us. If that sounds like prison to you, you're right, because it is. The easy path seems to be conformity, but it's actually exhausting. Being yourself, that's so much more fun. We have two lives, and the second begins when we realize we only have one. Whether we're ruled by others or ruled by our subconscious, the only way out is to find out who you are and do it on purpose. I like to be in control of how I look and how I feel and how I act, and the obligation is to smile back at someone if they smile at you. I don't think of myself as anything except me. Now let's go deeper. The hardest spell to break is not peer pressure. It's the power our subconscious minds have over our thoughts and actions. Without some kind of rigorous introspection or psychoanalysis or philosophy or these obscure YouTube channels, we stay blind. A slave to our programming, a magnet for the same situations, the same triggers, the same abuse, the same abusers. Our unconscious mind will always be in charge, and you will always wonder why the same things keep happening to you. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Make your shadow conscious. Name your favorite pitfalls, your default patterns your most common triggers. Make a list, my default settings. Make another list, my favorite fears. Make another, my most precious resentments. We all have them. That's half the battle. Just bring it into the light, see it on paper, laugh at it. Take responsibility for resenting someone. It's only hurting you, not them. Yeah, that other person probably sucks, but you're not perfect either. Apologize if necessary. They probably won't return the favor, but do it anyway. Until you do, your shadow will wreak havoc on your soul and your mind will search for a scapegoat, always. When a man is prey to his emotions, he is not his own master. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. What worries you masters you. It's misguided to think we can eliminate bad feelings and only have good ones. Although we try with distractions and addictions, you can't numb one feeling without numbing them all. You can't run from one without running from them all. You need all of them to be human. The point is to say, this isn't me. It's just a feeling I'm experiencing. It'll pass. If you're at the bottom, this too shall pass. If you're riding high, guess what? This too shall pass. To thine own self be true, and you will survive the lows and the highs without letting either get the better of you. So the last of one's freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. Above all, choose the attitude that honors your true self the most. Have you ever quit smoking or vaping? one of the hardest addictions to quit. Imagine the following experience. You look down at the cigarette in your fingers or the vape in your hand and you suddenly say, this isn't me. It's one thing to say, I really need to quit, but it's another thing to say, I'm better than this. This isn't me. Which do you think is more powerful? This isn't me. You walk away. You demystify the habit. You take away its power. You stop identifying with it. You're being true to yourself. You're honoring yourself. 
But as long as you identify with it, even identifying as an ex-smoker still places nicotine in your identity, fixed in your mind. Walking away from a toxic person or a toxic pattern or a toxic group is no different. An ex-whatever maintains the relationship, the identity with whatever. This isn't me. Well, that's being true to yourself. Walking your own path rejecting the either-or dichotomy. True freedom of choice is more than an option between A and the opposite of A. It's options A, B, C, D, etc. Manipulators play this game. Dictators, cults, even that substance, they always present to you the illusion of choice, all or nothing the us-versus-them opposition, but there's a middle way, or a third path, or a fourth, your path, to thine own self be true. When someone presents to you two opposites and demands you pick a side, don't play their game. Walk away. They're not worth your time. Trust that you can trust yourself. As soon as you trust yourself, you will know how to live. This is the motto of the Enlightenment. Sapere aude, have courage to use your own reason. Dare to think for yourself. It's harder than you think. Try to write something original, true. Draw something, a shape, a pattern you've never seen before. Combine things, mix it up, surprise yourself. Most people are other people. Their thoughts are someone else's opinions their lives, a mimicry, their passions, a quotation. See, now we're getting to the heart of the matter, to thine own self, to your soul, the innermost core of your being, the youest you you are. What makes you you? You are not a list of adjectives. You are not bullet points on your resume. You are not the bio on your profile. You are not a stereotype. You are not a Venn diagram of intersectionalities. You are a human being having a human experience. Why do we do interviews in person? There is something to you that can only be experienced in person. Why would we interview each other if resumes or stereotypes were sufficient enough? Why do we go on dates? Your social media personas, they aren't you. Why was COVID so detrimental to our mental health, our individual and collective mental well-being? We need to see each other, hear each other, feel, taste, smell each other. We need more hugs. Who cares how that sounds? We do. We need tickle fights. No emoji comes close. Your soul is magical. Your soul can only be here, now, in this place, in this moment, in real life. Who are you? What makes you tick? What makes you laugh? What do you like? What is your greatest strength? What is your greatest weakness? What is the hardest thing you've ever done? How did you get through that? How are you getting through that? This is how you make your persona. These trials, they show you what you're made of, what you're capable of doing, capable of being. Difficulties are things that show a person what they are. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The things that we love tell us what we are. Carpe diem, you only have one life. Own your shadow, it's the best part about you. Make your own mask. Craft your own persona as you would any work of art. The only bad art is unoriginal art. Make yours original. Then show someone else, look. Look at my beautiful mask. I made it. Let me see yours. Show me your persona. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are and you know what you want. Here's a vision for you. 
and I hope you're already there. I hope these words and these ideas simply validate what life has already taught you. The most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. Be to yourself as you would to your friend. Here's the vision. To be able to say the following. I accept myself without exception all of me. I love you without condition, all of you. I see you, you see me, that's it. Heaven in a nutshell. The rest is silence. <laughs>